Hey guys. <laughs> so I think this is going live now. Let's just see if anybody else is up and on YouTube. So honestly, this is just going to be like a co-working time. I just need you guys to hold me accountable because I have to speak next week. Hey, everybody. Hey, I have to speak next week at Black Equity Con, and I hope y'all can hear me okay. I know this room kind of echoes, but I have to speak next week at Black Equity Con, and, and then I have to speak two full days live of my whole course. I'm going to teach my whole course next week in Miami, June 11th and 12th. And if you guys want to come, the tickets are still available. You go to tradeandtravel.com backslash live. And then you can come see me teach the whole eight week curriculum in two days. <laughs> but hey, hey, everybody, welcome in. Um, so I just figured I'd come on here because I've been procrastinating a second ago. You can tell I don't feel like working on these slides because I went to the bathroom and I was supposed to just like get some earrings. I ended up flossing all these things that I usually just don't like to do. I started doing because I didn't feel like doing these slides. So I need you to hold me accountable. If anybody else is co-working, <laughs> feel free to pull out something you got to work on. And <laughs> thank you, babe. And also, I probably will need your help as I like put these slides together. Um, I think the first, hey, Florida. So the first in here, oh, I'll put the, the link to, to the live if any of you guys want to come. So tradeandtravel.com slash live. And if you're a student, make sure you check our Facebook group because you can use the promo codes in our Facebook group to get a discount. Like whatever you've paid for the course, you can take off of the live. And then if you're not a student yet, you get the full VIP online curriculum plus the live and you can use the, the promo code options here. I'll put that in here too. promo code options will give you the whole live experience for fifty five hundred. Really, that means that you're just paying for the, the VIP course, which is five thousand plus four ninety nine for the live experience which I personally think if, and here I'll put that promo code options. I personally think if you are in the course or if you've been wanting to take the trade and travel course, then you will really benefit from coming and hearing me teach it live. Like I've, of course I made the whole curriculum for online, but then I've also taught in person and there's just light bulbs that go off when you're in person, whether that's just, I say something differently, or I, I recorded the course almost like three, four years ago now, and I've done some updates, but me talking about it live now is different. And yes, I'm still trading like I did well <laughs> today, yesterday, in the uh, last couple of days, I did six figures in a day. So I'm still trading and I can tell you how to actually benefit right now and right now's economy and recession and whatever else. We're not in recession yet, but if we go into recession, like I want to just make sure you're prepared. So hope to see some of you guys in Miami. We are getting like close to being sold out. We had the room that we had fit 400 people. And right now we're at 379 tickets sold. So we have like 21 tickets left. I think I'm gonna allow a few more. We just asked them if we could expand our room and they have another room next door. So we're trying to see if we can get some more seats. But like, if you are interested in learning how to trade, especially learning how to trade from me, you should come hear me teach this live, period. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Terrence is like, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, cool. And Ellie says that she'll see me in Miami. Hey, Ellie. Yeah, let's do it. So... I'm, I, like I said, I'm excited about it. The only reason I'm doing it is literally because just God put it on my heart to teach. We're in our, like we're heading towards a recession. Stocks have been continually going down. I just wanted to make sure that everybody got it and like understood how to trade in this time. So that's why I'm teaching, but don't expect me to do this again. A lot of people have been like, oh, come to my city and do this and do that. 
I'm going to be teaching for literally eight hours straight, eight to 6 p.m., excuse me, nine hours straight, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday and Sunday. I am not trying to do this again to myself. Like there's no need <laughs> for me to do this again to myself. So, and no, Tamik says, is it gonna be recorded? No, it's not gonna be recorded. It's an experience that you gotta experience with us in the room. I know a lot of times people do the live stream and all that stuff, but I just, no, I just need to focus. Sometimes it can get a little, confusing when like you're trying to talk to zoom and talk to other people in the room and then so no nope, the people in the room are going to get it <laughs> yeah um, and then someone said will it be recorded and uploaded on the site or youtube no this is my real curriculum so it's the trade and travel course the only way you'll get access to this is if you're a student so you have to sign up for trade and travel or if you pay for the live you get the course plus the live experience do you guys have any other questions before I start working on the slides? Awesome. Welcome, New Heartbreak. Says, I'm definitely going to purchase your coaching program. Good stuff. Hey. It is I. Hey, Canton. Love it. All right. Oh, you're welcome. Oni says, we appreciate you. Thanks for doing the live class. You're welcome. Yeah, like we have we have 20,000 students now in trade and travel and everybody's been taking it online. And I just feel like there's some people that fall into a few different buckets. Either it's, oh man, Terry, I love the course, but I'm, I've only passed week two. There's eight weeks, right? <laughs> so they just haven't finished and they haven't had time. Time is a big thing. Like, oh man, I just don't have enough time. Well, come, you can learn it in two days. Just you know, buckle down, force yourself to be there, sit in the room, learn it all in two days, right? And then there's people that just learn better in classroom settings. Like I remember when I was in um, getting my real estate license, I would always do my classes in the real estate room because first of all, if they give you a book or if you have to do it online, it takes forever. But in the in the room, it just takes two days. You go one day, the next day they quiz you and take a test and you're done, you know? So I like being like finished fast. So it's just, it's just nice. Hey, Sean. Yep. June 11th and 12th. I'll be teaching live in Miami. Um, Bolo says, do you give out signals live in trade and travel? No, I don't. However, we have so many students that have done my trading plan that now in our Facebook group, we're able to give each other suggestions. And they now have telegram groups too, like trade and travel. They have telegram groups all over the world and meetups all over the world. So you'll see pictures from our San Francisco group, our DC group, our um, Jamaica group, you know, like <laughs> all over the world. There's a group actually going to Turks and Caicos next week. They traded for their Turks and Caicos trip, literally trade and travel. They traded, they're staying in this beautiful luxury resort. I was like, y'all didn't invite me, but anyway. Yeah, like they traded to go do that. So no, I don't give out signals, but I teach you how to trade. I teach you how to find the right companies, how to look at charts for yourself, how to find the entry and the exits, how to place the trades. Then more advanced is how to make money when the market falls. We look at gaps in Globex trading. That has been killing it these last four months. Looking at what happens overnight and then trading the gap has just been beautiful beautiful and then we do short selling that's how to make money on the way down and then we uh, we expand that with options trading that's week eight so those are all the things i'm covering next weekend the first one weeks one through four we're doing on saturday and then all the advanced stuff we're doing on sunday yeah you're welcome <laughs> yeah the lisa's like we have so many telegram groups we rock it's so true Hey, Alexander, how you doing? You should. So the high value nurse says, I'm going to buy your eight week course. You definitely should. And then come to the live. Even if so, someone asked me this before, too. They said, well, what if I what if I just buy the course now? Like, will I still be able to understand? And the answer is yes. I actually encourage you to do that. So one of my friends, Abu, 
two years ago, I did this live in 2020, right before the, like before COVID. So it was January, 2020. I was about to coach, like I had to train all my staff. So I told my students at the time, hey, if any of you guys can make it to Dallas, I'll train you too live. I'll, I'll do the whole course live. And they flew in and packed out the room and we taught. And if you guys go to Instagram, I just posted a video, Selenia and Alex, and Alex, they, they were at the live. So if you watch that video from earlier today, it's, it, says, it says like student testimonial. If you watch that video, you'll see like a whole bunch of people in there learning and me teaching. That was 2020. So that was like a smaller group. But can you imagine that was 40 people? This is going to be 400 people. <laughs> crazy, just crazy. Um, I don't even remember what I was talking about now. But oh, if you join the class, this will be good for you because you'll get to see everything live, hear it from me once, and then you'll have the online course and you can go back and hear it again on your own time. But I think the course will make so much more sense if you've heard it live. So yes, I do encourage if you're not in the course yet, you could buy VIP or just buy the live and, and then you'll be able to come see it live and then also have the online course. Hey guys, welcome in. Oh, Rhonda, okay, that's a good question, Rhonda. So Rhonda says, and here y'all, I'm practicing my new studio. I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna see how these things work. <laughs> I think it's so cool. I'm like literally looking at three cameras. But um, one of the questions that Rhonda just asked was, what, what about middle-aged people? How easy is it for middle-aged people? And I'll tell you the truth. Most of the people in my class are aged 35 to 55. So we, um, a lot of the people in my course are middle-aged. The 35-year-old the crowd has been working in their job for about 10 years or different jobs in their careers, and they're ready to just switch and do something new. And then the 55-year-old crowd, they're looking to retire. So they're trying to make sure that they like know how to make their money work for them so that when they retire, they can you know, really retire and not have to go back to work. They can enjoy it. And then everybody in between, I have one lady, her son is taking the class and he's nine years old. He is literally in second grade, I believe. And he is learning how to trade. And then I have some 80 year olds in the class too. And they're just like, Terry, I've always wanted to learn how to invest. And you make it so easy that I'm just excited to learn a new skill. So we got everybody in the class. And the cool thing about the live is you're gonna get to meet all of those folks in all the different ranges and colors and experience levels. So it'll be really cool. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you so much. The MG44563. Thank you so much for the super chat. That's awesome. All right. Oh, cool. So here we go. Like sports fam says, I'm 52 and it's been wonderful. So see, middle age. Colette says she's 61. Patty Mac, second graders aren't nine. Okay, how, what grade are second grade, what grade are nine year olds? Was that fourth grade? Y'all gonna make me go back to my school days. Okay, the pre K four, first grade, pre K is five, first grade is six, second grade is seven, eight, nine. Okay, fourth grade. <laughs> Carrie's 38. She's a VIP student. Kevin says, you're such a great teacher. Kate, okay, Kate Kid says, what is your Instagram? Can you put it in the chat? Yes, because we get a lot of imposters in Instagram. And y'all, we have been working with Meta and talking to them the past three years, and they still have not verified me. So still working on it. But my Instagram is just my name. So Terry... Instagram, T-E-R-I, and then my last name, I-J-E-O-M-A. That's it. No punctuations, no extra numbers, no extra letters. Sometimes they'll put like extra I's in there, or there was one that had like 181,000 followers. It had an I-A at the end instead of just an A. So y'all be careful. Make sure that you're paying close attention to what you're following. 
Okay, make sure they spelled it right. And if you see some of them like sending you messages or following you just randomly, that's probably not me. And then if they're talking about crypto or send me some money or um, I'll trade for you, that's also not me. I don't trade for anyone. The only way that I teach you how to trade is trade for yourself. And I teach you through the course and the link to the course here. I'll put that up too is investwithterry.com. Link to trade and travel course. Investwithterry.com. Also make sure that you're paying attention to that too, because I've been seeing some emails. Somebody was doing an investwithterry.net and saying, oh, there's a discount on the class. Y'all don't be fooled. It's investwithterry.com. And then to the live experience, you'll automatically get entered into the VIP course. That's tradeandtravel.com slash live, L-I-V-E. Right, Kevin? Kevin says, I get those messages all the time from scammers. It's horrible. And then good stuff. I'm seeing all these ages. Michelle is 53 in the class. Good. And you're going to be there live. So y'all get to meet some of your YouTube family coming to the live. Uh, Belisa said she's 47. Belisa, did I say that right? Um, okay, here, I'm gonna come back up and answer some more of your questions. All good. And Stacy says, I'm middle-aged and, and Terry and the crew really break it down and make it understandable. And, and heads up sh or shout out to my staff. So we actually do four live coaching calls per week in the online course. Some people don't know that, but we have a month or Sunday call where we go over charts. Then there's a Tuesday VIP call with one of our other coaches and Chris is going to be at the live. So you guys will get to meet Chris for the first time live. And then Wednesday, we have another coaching call with Nina. And I think she's trying to also be at the live. So you get to meet her. And then, excuse me. And then Saturday, we have another coaching call. I was running the Saturday calls for a little while this year, but now we have Andrea is running the Saturday calls. So four times a week, you also get live coaching calls and support in trade and travel, but nothing's going to be the same as being in person with me. I'm just saying, and having me teach the whole class, that's going to be different. <laughs> All right. Other classes. Uh, third degree burn says, have you ever thought about doing many courses at churches? Have I thought about it? Yes. So I am an ordained minister and, um, and ordained to preach too. So at my church, we actually did do a class back in the day where I taught at the church and they gave me a room. And that was like one of the first, were first group of people I taught was people at church. And now like this live experience that I'm, I'm telling you guys about is literally probably going to be it. Like y'all, it takes everything out of me to teach and especially teaching this long, like eight hours straight, no breaks. Like even with, with school, you get like a recess break, a lunch break, a, but no, nah, this is like me crash course teaching a full eight hours for two days in a row. I'm good. I have no desire to do it again. So thank you for the request, but probably not. <laughs> Um, other things. Okay, good. People were saying nine years old or third or fourth grade. So we have a third or fourth grader in our class and he is killing it. So if he can do it, then you can do it too. <laughs> um, yep. They're in the building. Okay, so Samuel said, what is, what's the best stocks to buy and trade as the market is in bare, bare, bare minimum now? So I think you meant bear market now. Um, I actually have a watch list that I trade and part of the live, we're going to be talking about picking good companies. I would say, look at the companies that you know are still going to do well. And right now we're about to go into earnings season, which is crazy because it seems like it was just yesterday. But 
once a quarter, all the companies report how they're doing. I'd suggest if there's some companies that you like or that you've been watching, look at their earnings first. If they say that they're still healthy companies, they're still doing really well, their um, forecast is positive, their earnings per share are beating expectations, then that's still a good company for you to consider. Um, however, if they are not doing well, for example, some of the products that they they were going to do are not coming through, their supply chain issues. I know inflation is hitting Microsoft. They just guide it down lower. So just be careful, like watch to see if the company's still healthy. Usually I would have told you to look at their chart. And this is why this, honestly, guys, this is why it's good to be in the room next week because there are some things that I've said and held on to the last four years that are a little different right now. So usually I would have said the way to pick a good company is to look at their chart and to see if they've been up over the past year. But there's a ton of companies right now, like I'm thinking about Amazon and Netflix and Amazon's coming back up a little bit. I know they have their stock split coming up. We could talk about that if you want, but there's quite a few good companies that stocks that stock is really down low right now, but it's because it its chart is mimicking the overall market. It's not because the stock is unhealthy. So that's why I'm saying it's really important now that you start understanding what a healthy company looks like. And then you can decide if you want to invest in them now. Does that make sense? Y'all put an emoji in there if that makes sense. Oh, cool. Lots more questions coming through. Someone said, where did I take my first trip? After I quit my job, the first one was to South Korea. Yeah, I was in South Korea and y'all, South Korea is beautiful. Like it's clean. It's got all these beautiful buildings. The food is good. There's like hills too. So you get to kind of have all the different terrains. I, I could do South Korea. If I needed to move somewhere fast, I could do South Korea. Okay, D. D. Gabu, I don't know how to say your name, but you said, can you still come to the live? Yes, the live is next weekend and tickets are still available, but we don't have a whole bunch. So um, go to, I'll put it in here again. Go to tradeandtravel.com slash live and you can get your ticket and use promo code, use promo code options to take a discount off. And if you're a student, make sure you check for our student discount codes because I'm taking off whatever you've paid for the course. We're taking that out of the price of the live. So you don't have to pay for that double. Good. Sports fam says, um, oh, <laughs> these are a lot of good questions. Okay. So sports fam says, Terry, will there be time for some questions? Yes. And we will have some coaches there. So my goal is if there's anything I can't answer, to send you guys off to like designated spots where coaches are, where you can get your question answered. And then Chelsea said, will there be time for pictures in Miami? Yes, there will be time for pictures. We actually have several videographers coming to and photographers. So there will be time for pictures. Uh, pictures with me, now that I'm not sure, <laughs> tell you the truth, just because I know how drained I'm going to be at the end of each day. And sometimes we'll have events and there's like long lines of people to take pictures. And I want to take a picture with everyone, but I just need to be mindful of my energy so that I can be like on and able to teach the whole time. I've been jump roping and everything, y'all, to try to get my endurance up. So, so we will see. But you guys know, like, I love you all, so most likely you'll get a chance to take a picture, but um, yeah, let's just be mindful of my energy before I make promises. Um, good, TB says, or T-Bay says, does, do you have to be a VIP to attend the live course? Yes, but your ticket, if you buy the trade travel ticket, so it's going to say 6000 when you go to the website. Use options to take that off. So now it's 5,500. That automatically signs you into VIP, which is 5,000. So that you automatically get enrolled in VIP. If you're not in VIP yet, so you're just a trade and travel student, 
then use the like go into our Facebook group. There's a code in there for trade and travel students. Use that. And that ends up getting you the ticket for for cheaper. We take off the amount you've already paid. Okay. And we give you still that 500 discount. All right. So just be mindful. So basically the answer is yes, upgrade to VIP, and then you get the course for $4.99. You get the live for $4.99. Ah, oh, thank you. So Tammy says, I can't wait till I can afford to join your class. Thanks for helping, helping the people. You are so welcome, Tammy. And then so that you know, there are payment plans for my course. So I'm going to put that in here too. So this is the payment plan link. Let me make sure that this is right before I put it in here for you guys. But we use a company called Wise Bank. And you can actually, even if you guys wanted to now, use the payment plan to sign up for VIP and then enroll for the live. And it'll be just $4.99 for you to come to the live. So payment plan. There you go. I just put that, that into the, the chat. But the payment plan is wisebank.co slash Terry. And you can actually do payment plans up to 12 months. So it ends up being like as low as $200 a month. Yeah. So that might be a way to help you, Tammy. And anybody else who's been like saving up to join the class, you can join now. And especially if you wanted to come to the live, you can also use it to upgrade. So any of my students that are in trade and travel and want to upgrade to VIP, you can use the Wise Bank link to upgrade and then and then come to the live. All right. Yes. Okay, kid says, I would love to learn risk management. That's, that's happening in day one, so on Saturday. Okay, so Wanda says, let's talk about Amazon stock split. So here's my thoughts. Let me tell you what normally happens with stock splits, and then I'll tell you what I'm personally doing right now. What normally happens with stock splits is that a stock will run up until the day of its split, and then after it splits, it'll drop a little bit. So we saw this with Tesla stock the last time it did a split. It ran up into the split, and then once the split occurred, the stock dropped down. But then you had about maybe a couple days, a few, you know, a short amount of time, to get in at the lower price, and then the stock started rising again. I expect that to happen with Amazon too. I expect it to run up, which it's been doing this week, run up into the split. The split is official, I believe, on June 6th. So next week, the split, you'll, you'll see it in your portfolio. It'll probably drop a little bit after the news. You know, they say buy the rumor, sell the news. It'll probably drop a little bit after that. And then when it comes down in price, you can get it again and it'll go back up. How am I playing this as a trader? Y'all, I have been all over Amazon this week because the chart says <laughs> it's going to go up. So I've been trading it and just really enjoying my life in my portfolio. Y'all know Amazon is, is bay for me. It's the, the seven figure in a day stock. It's the stock that I made seven figures in a day on. So I love Amazon. And I love to trade it both directions, up and down. The sad part, though, about the split is that it's not going to move as much anymore as it used to. So right now, I'm excited because it has these like $100 days. Like it'll go up $75. It'll go up $85. It'll go up $125 a couple of days ago. It was up $125 in a day. And that kind of move allows me to make quite a bit of money. Because, you know, if I'm an options trader. That's 100 shares at a time. So if it moves $100 and I've got a ton of shares, then golden. Just love it to death. However, when it splits, the stock itself is going to be worthless. Well, not worthless, but the stock itself will be a cheaper or less expensive price. But that also means that it's going to move less. So just imagine right now, one share is moving $100 a day. If it splits into four, that same move will only be $25 in a day. 
So as traders, they're going to be less, ex quote unquote, they'll be less expensive per share, but then also they're going to move less per share. Does that make sense? And, you're, and the amount of money that you're going to have. So I have some people like, I want to be part of it before the split. If you invest $10,000 today before the split, when it splits, you're still only going to have $10,000 invested in Amazon. That part's not going to change. And then the move, like I said, is going to be a little less. It's not going to be like, oh, all of the shares that I have are now moving $100 a day. No, now the shares you have are going to move like $20 a day, $25 a day. And will it continue to grow? Will it potentially grow higher? Yeah, there's going to probably be more demand because now people feel like the stock is more in their price range. But at the end of the day, it really didn't change value. There's just more for the same amount of money. So what would I do if I were you? If you're a long-term investor and you just want some of Amazon, I'd still get it at a good price. And right now it's about $1,000 here, we'll check. I think it's like $1,000 lower than it's high. So today Amazon closed at 25.38, it went up $104. See those beautiful $100 days. Um, but if we look at the chart, its highs were, let me look at weekly. Its highs back in March were 3,400. And then before that, in end of 2021 was 20, it was 3,600. So you're still in a good position if you're a long-term investor. Like it has $1,000 that it can go up even after it's split if it drops a little bit. So maybe after the split, get in. After the split, get in. When it drops a little bit, then you can get in. Um, if you're a long-term investor, if you're a short-term investor, looking at the chart, Amazon actually could fall. And like it's in a seller's level right now. If it passes through that seller's level, then it has a good amount of room to run up to, in a week, up to even 2,800. But I would just watch the chart if you're a trader. I wouldn't even think about the short, like the fact that it's about to split. I would just look at the chart and let the chart tell you what to do on that trade. Does that make sense? Y'all put a thumbs up in the chat if that makes sense. Marie says, Terry, will you ever be coming to the Detroit area? Not that I know of. I have plans to do that right now. Okay. Um, Jeezy says, um, Dan says, was I over the pattern day trader rule when I first started trading? The answer is no. I first started trading with about $16,000 and it was all the money that was in my old retirement accounts. I had moved that over into a self-directed IRA account. And um, I was trading with that with 16,000. So no, I wasn't. But the way, like, the way that I'm trading now and the way that I'm gonna teach you, most of the time you're gonna end up being a swing trader. Not that that means you're gonna trade like, you're going to hold stuff a long time. It might be that you buy it today and sell it tomorrow, or you buy it today and sell it in two days. You need to give time for your stock to actually go to your target price. But if you have a rotation, so say, for example, in my portfolio right now, I had Tesla. I know I have a love-hate relationship with Tesla. Tesla is also the biggest loss I've ever had. Um, horrible. But anyway, <laughs> I had Tesla, Apple, Amazon, and Toll Brothers in my account today. So Toll Brothers is taking its sweet time to do what I wanted to do. I actually wanted to go down and it's just loving the fact that it had good earnings right now, but eventually I feel like it's going to go down. Um, Tesla, I sold some earlier this week and then got back into it. So now it's in the portfolio, but I won't sell it yet. Amazon, I had some yesterday sold. 
uh, got into some more this morning. That one I sold today. So that was a day trade, but then there's some that I haven't sold and won't sell till tomorrow. So that would be a swing trade. The Apple trade I got in today, but then I'll be getting out probably tomorrow or, or Monday. So those are swing trades. So even if I was like, even if I had less than 25,000 in my account, I would still be okay because you just can only do three day trades within a five day period to be considered a pattern day trader. And when you're a pattern day trader, you do have to have 25,000 in your account. But most of the time, you're going to be a swing trader. Okay, so Natalia says, ethically, when you're investing, do you determine who is getting your money? I'm going to I'm gonna play with my little switches here. <laughs> this is so cool. Um, we literally just set up this studio like yesterday. <laughs> um, so ethically, when you're investing, do you determine who is getting your money? Like Amazon, for instance, but they treat their workers poorly. Great question, Natalia. Honestly, this is going to sound bad, but not really. I'm thinking about the overall health of the company when I'm when I'm thinking about money. And maybe in the future I'll be more mindful, but I'm not going to let what's going on with someone else hinder me from building my portfolio. And that might sound really crazy, but I think about all the good that they do too, like the fact that there's stuff that couldn't be delivered overseas and the only people that could get it there was Amazon. So, or the fact that I actually have, I have people in my family, like my cousins that work for Amazon and they're paying their salary and that's how they're able to take care of their families. So even though there might be some things with the company that I don't like, I still like the company overall and I'm happy that it's here. I've been trading Amazon since it was $199. So there's been a lot <laughs> that has gone on with the company since I started trading them. But good question. If it was something that I really, really was against, then I probably wouldn't invest with them. But I'm, I'm actually okay with that company. All right. Let's keep going. Yes, there's a discount if you come to the live. Use the code OPTIONS with an S. And that's if you're not in the course at all. If you're in the course, look at our Facebook group, guys, or check your email because we have some discount codes for students that are, that are even better. No, you can't join the live virtually. It's just in person. Um, yay. Thank you, Trina. She said, it's June. Happy almost birthday, Terry. Thank you. Guys, I'm a June 19th baby. For freedom, baby. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Nope, no trips planned for anywhere else. Except for I'm going overseas. I was asked to speak in Tanzania and Nairobi. So I'm excited to go to Africa. That'll be fun. Someone else has a love-hate relationship with Tesla. Mm-hmm. B. Bala says, I don't have any recaps. Actually, in my class, we have over... It used to be over 48 hours of videos of me and like looking at charts and looking at the trade. So my students have lots of videos of me trading. So for those that say she doesn't have it to prove, like I literally have the screenshots in our course. So if you become a student, then you'll get to see the trade. That's just going to block you.
<laughs> right. There's a lot of coaching calls in the curriculum. Okay. All right, guys. So I don't see any others. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dion. DeAndre says, we literally watched you retire your mom to hell with dude. <laughs> People are crazy. Okay, so A, darling. Okay, Alvino says, do you have an options play for Amazon? Definitely come to the live. I'll be teaching options next weekend. Then Terry, any advice on FOMO? For fear of missing out, I think charts are the best thing to help you with that. If you are looking at a chart and you feel like you're about to miss out, then you're going to see that most likely it's about to be in the seller's level and you shouldn't be buying it anyway. At the time that everybody's talking about it, it's probably going into a place where you should be selling, not buying. But that we will talk about risk management as well. Lakeisha, the course, the eight-week course is $5,000, but half of that is $2,500. And there is a payment plan. I put that in here. But for the live, it's with the options promo code 5,500. I agree with you, AR. AR says, why do people feel so free to have opinions and no facts? Yeah, that's crazy. Like what's sad, and I'm not gonna give too much credit to people that are crazy, but what's sad is like, I see so much crazy stuff and they they have no, like, no valid stuff. For example, on one of the interviews I did recently, somebody was like, someone who's successful, who's successful wouldn't teach. Y'all, I'm very successful, but I started in education. Why wouldn't I teach? Like, it's just something that I really like to do. Why wouldn't I teach? Just because you're successful, that doesn't mean you don't teach people anymore. Like that doesn't make sense. I think what what that really says is more about the person themselves. That means that they shouldn't have any money because if they got some money, they wouldn't help anybody else. And they just project that onto other people, which is sad. Okay. I don't really do oil and gold. I see a couple questions in here about that. I'm literally a stocks girl, guys. Like I focus on stocks and options only. That's my jam. Right. <laughs> thanks sports fam he says i love the class you show in every interaction everyone doesn't understand ministry exactly ashanti definitely come to miami you just asked about la girl we gonna be glad if i make it through this one if it, if i do it again <laughs> that would be a long ways away all right Right. Hey, good stuff. Gaston says, don't pay attention to the naysayers. I know the course is legit. Took my first live trade and made 2,600 and then the rest is history. Good job. Okay, so more questions coming in. So here says... So T Tiger says, do you recommend ethical broker who will place your trades on time? I don't know any brokers that trade for people. So I can't really answer that question. And if again, if you guys see anything, somebody was talking about WhatsApp. I'm not in WhatsApp. If you're talking to somebody that has my picture in WhatsApp, that is not me. I don't recommend a broker. I don't use brokers. I don't use signals. <laughs> well, I have um, I have an online broker for my trades, but there's no one that's placing trades for me, right? So no, yes, 
Siobhan says, can you take the class while making the payment arrangement? Yes. So once you start working on, once you start paying with Wise Bank, you get access to the class right away. Yay, Dr. Sheba, can't wait to see you in Miami. Good stuff. Yes, it's my calling. Oh, thank you. Persistent Don Diva said, join Trade and Travel three days ago. You're an amazing teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, no. Marco, you paid somebody on Twitter? I just got verified on Twitter, guys. So, and I'm not on there very much. So don't, again, if anybody is sending you a message on Twitter, you, um, WhatsApp, even in Instagram and stuff. I'm in Instagram, but I'm probably not sending you a message. So just be careful. The only way to get me or get to my course is investwithterry.com. That's the way to get to the course. Instagram is Terry Egioma, all one word, no extra letters. So T E R I I J E O M A. Just make sure it's spelled correctly. Um, also on email, if you need me, it's hello at tradeandtravel.com. That's me and my team. Hello at tradeandtravel.com. <laughs> I love it, QB. Like sitting here with my notepad. Tell me what questions you have. I'm going to open up Prezi though, because my goal on here was to get my my presentation done or at least started. I'm gonna work on the presentation for Black Equity Con. So before the two days before my live in Miami is Black Equity Con. Has anybody heard about Black Equity Con? Or are y'all gonna be there? Ooh, yeah, I can. That's a good question. 1879. I'll talk about that. But if anybody's gonna be at Black Equity Con, then um, you'll know. They're doing two days, Thursday and Friday of entrepreneurs, and they have like 4,000 entrepreneurs coming and just different people learning how to build wealth for themselves. So black equity in this, in this way is not diversity and, in, and inclusion. It's more like, how do we get to the bag, right? So I'm speaking Friday for that. And then I do my live Saturday and Sunday at the same hotel. So it's the Hyatt Regency, Miami. Okay, yeah, so some people are saying never heard of it. BlackEquityCon.com is that conference. And for that one, I think I'm gonna speak on how to invest during a recession, like top three ways to invest during a recession. Or actually tell me you guys, do y'all do y'all like that topic or what other topics should I talk about at Black Equity Con? I'll wait for you guys uh, thing to come through. I don't know what this is. Let's go away. Okay, good. Some people are saying good topic. No, I don't teach Forex. I just teach stocks and, op stocks and options. My live is Saturday and Sunday of next week. So June 11th and 12th from 8 to 6 p.m. both days. And they ran out of hotel rooms at the Hyatt Regency. But I just checked recently the Intercontinental next door still has rooms and they're only going for like $280 a night. So real cheap. And the flights right now to Miami are still cheap too. So it's not too late. Okay. All right. Deandra's talking about... Um, so yeah, I'm looking at topics that you all are thinking about. So talk about mindset and how, should, how we should look to leverage our money and not flip it. But I do flip my money, so that might not be good for me. 
How to invest in a team to grow your business. Yeah, that would be good. Investing during recession. So that's what I was planning to talk on. So Dallas, okay, Dallas says, will we be able to get into Black Equity Con with our trade and travel registration? And I'm not sure. I've been working with the team to try to, to see if we can make that happen, but I'm not quite sure yet. So I'll send you guys an email um, with that. Will, the, will this live be saved? Y'all want me to save this one? Ooh, that's a good topic. So Douglas says, please talk about balancing your faith and your business as a top female trader. You're amazing at that. Hmm, that's good. That's good. Faith is really, really important to me. And you know what? This is random, but, um, and here I'm gonna come over here so I can, y'all can be closer, but you know what I found? Some people are afraid to talk about their faith because they feel like it's gonna push people away from them. And what I found is it actually draws people closer to me because they know like who I'm actually res responsible to. Like there's, for me, I have to answer to God. So I don't care what anybody says, that stupid person in the chat, like I still answer to God. And I think that that's important. And like one of the, I just had a mastermind here in Puerto Rico and some of my students came down to learn from me in person. And one of them, uh, Deancy, love her and her wife, beautiful couple. They, um, they're Buddhist, but they still, they still like love to be in the environment. She even taught me how to do the chants. And like, I, I love that. I'm, I'm open to all kinds of people and all kinds of faiths and, and spiritualities, but I personally believe in Jesus Christ and I'm always going to represent that, but everybody's welcome. Right. And I think that that's been a blessing. So. All right. Um, okay, so I'm looking at more of these topics. Okay, so I do trade with a online broker. So the ones that I've been liking lately have been TD Ameritrade, TradeStation. Some of my students really like Fidelity. So all of those are okay. What I meant by I don't use a broker is I'm not calling someone to place the trade for me. And there's some people who they don't want to trade their money at all. They just want to give it to someone else. I still like the USDC coin. That's a stable coin. And the interest rates lately have been going down when crypto started going down. At one point, the interest rate for USDC coins was like 6%. Now, lately, it's been more like 3 to 4%. But that's still better than nothing in a savings account. So if you're thinking about just I wanted to go somewhere so we can make some money. That might be a good option too. USDC stable coins. Excuse me. Mm, that's a good topic. How to become more confident in your trades. I think if you guys come to the live, you'll get more confident as well because you'll just feel confident in the knowledge. Let me move this out the way. But I'll take some notes on these topics. Um, as a beginner, how much do you need to start trading? You need $500 to open an account and use one that has a simulator in it. But TradingView, for those that, um, for those that are wondering, tradingview.com is a good place to also practice charting and have a simulator. It used to be free, but now they charge something. So that's another simulator. And also I heard that Investopedia has a simulator. I'm not sure if any of you guys have checked it out, but it might be another one. I'll explain odd enhancers in the live for sure next weekend. Allie, do have you um 
have you actually seen what they're what they're giving? Is it actually the course or you pay that and then they don't have anything? Because I've been wondering on that. Some people told me, you know, don't put your credit cards in there because they could steal your your um, bank information. Oh, that's good. I'm seeing a lot of people that are also believers and like having faith. Mm. Understand the assignment, yes. Okay, I'm looking through more of these topics. Y'all can look at the chat too while I'm looking at the chat. But... <laughs> Do your Igbo relatives know that you help people create wealth? Just wondering, they should be proud of you. Yes, actually. Um, some of my relatives on my Igbo side, my dad included, they uh, work for the company. They work for me. So yeah, they're very proud <laughs> and happy. No, someone said, there, am I coming to Atlanta or Charlotte? Not planning on it. Y'all, if y'all want to hear me teach my whole course live, come to Miami. Come to Miami. There's no plans to be in a different city at any further time. Like literally, I felt this on my heart to teach. I want to teach. I'm going to teach. And then after that, I don't have to do it again. I'm good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, someone said, have you ever thought about writing a newsletter for your students? Yes, actually, we recently hired a copywriter so that we can start sending more information and emails to our students. I know. Somebody said, they're surprised I'm not watching Steph in the finals. That's my, that's my boyfriend in my head. But I got to work on this presentation. I guess in a minute, I do need to go. Maybe I can catch the last part of the game and work on the presentation. Oh, thank you, Ruben. Ruben said, I'm not a Christian, but I love your course and your spirit, Terry. Real recognizes real, and we are all one and part of the uh, part of the creator. I hope you have a great time in Miami. Thank you, honey. I appreciate that. I'll be in Miami next week teaching my course. Make sure you register. Do not just roll up on me because my six bodyguards will be on you. <laughs> so make sure you register. <laughs> For this class. <laughs> I like that you was like, all I can hear is book the vacation. It's true. Come to Miami. Okay, guys. So I'm going to spend some time working on the slides for this and not just looking at the comments. Feel free to chime in if you want to, or y'all can go watch a game. I'm just going to stay on here so that I can keep myself accountable. I'll probably be talking out loud to myself and to y'all. And if you're on here too, then I'll ask for your advice on what I'm gonna do with these slides. But I think I'm gonna stick with the topic of the recession. Um, and if I do the recession, like how to invest and make money during a recession, I think I'm going to have to start with, and y'all, this is me just brainstorming out loud, but um, Douglas says, how do you register for the class, the full class, like the live on that Saturday and Sunday is invest with, nope, sorry, it's tradeandtravel.com slash live. And it's going to be in Miami. June 11th and 12th from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. both days. Yes, after that, I it's my birthday. So I'm trying to just jump on a plane. I want to just go to any airport and just say, where are y'all flying today? 
and just go. That is truly my goal. All right. Okay, and I don't trade indicators, Gregory, so um, don't have an answer for you there. So the day before my live on Friday, I'm gonna be teaching at Black Equity Con for about 4,000 people. I, I'm only teaching for like 45 minutes at that one, but that's the recession session. No, I wasn't trying to rhyme, but um, so how to invest and make money during recession. It's gonna have to start with like me introducing myself. And then I need to explain to them what a recession is. Fun fact. So I found out that you'll know that you're in a recession when five different things start going down. So one is the GDP. So the overall gross domestic product of the United States, that economists, some famous economists somewhere tell us these numbers, but they come out on a regular basis. So we'll start seeing consecutive quarters where they're going down. Another one is gonna be income. You're gonna start seeing that people are getting lower income. So that could look like lower salaries. It could look, off, look like um, no bonuses that type of thing. So income is gonna start going down. Also employment is gonna start going down. So one of the, the reasons why people are saying right now we're not in a recession is because unemployment is still low. But when you all start seeing employment start going up consecutively, then we may be heading towards recession. Next thing is gonna be manufacturing. When the manufacturing numbers and reports from different companies start going down, then that means that that's a signal we're going into recession. So companies won't be making as much stuff. Those numbers will start going down. If you're wondering like, where would I find this stuff out? CNBC, definitely listen to them on a regular basis and they'll report out these numbers on a regular basis. And then finally, retail sales. One thing I am a little concerned about is like Target and Walmart. Did you guys see their earnings recently? Both of them, the earnings just, after earnings, the stocks just dropped down. So we were a little worried when retail sales start going down, that's a sign of recession coming. But I'll tell you the truth, like there's other companies that said things were fine. So I believe Costco had their earnings and they were like, oh, we had a blowout quarter. So really that one is another number that economists are paying attention to. But it makes sense, right? If income is going down, then retail sales will go down. But when you start seeing all five of those happen at the same time, then you'll know, oh, we're actually in a recession. And another thing that's different, yeah, <laughs> that's what's up, it's true. So another thing you can think about too is inflation is not the same thing as recession. Some people I think get those confused, like, oh, prices are going up. We're going into recession. No, inflation is literally because the government is trying to take money out of the economy. So, well, excuse me, I'm, I'm talking about interest rates rising and recession or inflation. So let me tell you the difference between those two. So inflation is going to be prices of things just getting more expensive. So gas prices going up, food going up, prices. Y'all, I went into Walgreens the other day to get some stuff for my nails, which y'all know are never done. But I went to get some stuff for my nails, literally a little bitty pack of nail stuff, $18 in Walgreens. First of all, I think they just, they just decide whatever price they want to have. But you guys can tell too, like prices are going up. So inflation is just the price of things are rising. Now, the interest rates are rising, and I, I've missed a part there. The price of things rising will lead can lead to recession. So that's why many times you'll hear people talk about those things together. And let me drink some water. But you'll hear people talk about inflation and recession together, but they're not the same thing. So inflation is the price of things going up and it can lead to recession because when things go up, then people aren't buying stuff. So those retail sales go down. 
when prices go up, well, businesses can't afford as much stuff. So now they're having to lay off people and have unemployment, right? So, so all those factors I was telling you about, inflation can lead to them, but it doesn't mean that we're, not, we're actually in recession yet. So just know that those are different. Um, IO, the discount says, what's the coupon code for discount? It's options. Options and no space at the end. Yes, Trina says, food prices are crazy. Have y'all seen the price of eggs? Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> Pink Lady says, Amazon says they've hired too many people. recession, <laughs> unemployment is going to go up. <laughs> the companies are going to have to start laying folks off, right? And, and the thing is, right now we have several things impacting us, like why we're going towards recession. So first of all, supply chain has still been a problem. It was a problem last year, and I think people thought that it was going to get better. Do you guys remember that time when everybody was talking about how boats were stuck in California and couldn't come down? And the reason why stores didn't have much on the shelf is because supply chain? Well, it has not gone away. And we even saw that in several earnings reports last, last quarter, they cited that one of the problems they're having is still supply chain. And China being in lockdown did not help that. When China was in lockdown, nobody was producing things. They had ships just sitting there and that, that's leading to lower um, amount of pro products and produce in stores. And we have low supply and high demand, prices go up. So it's just a cyclical thing. Low supply chain equals helping inflation equals potential recession down the road, right? It doesn't mean that it has to happen, but these are some things that help it happen. Also, we still have debt issues. People don't talk about that as much lately, but I'm still concerned. Like we didn't get all these stimulus checks from nowhere. Like we're gonna have to pay for that at some point. And back to the interest rates. The fact that we had so much money in the economy is why the interest rates are now rising. So if you guys remember when we did, when we were scared that we wouldn't have enough money, like think about COVID. When COVID happened, people didn't have jobs. That nobody was going out to shop. They were worried that, um, that the economy would fall apart. What did they do? They lower interest rates. And they did that even before when we were worried about not having enough money in the economy and recession and whatnot, they lower the interest rates. Why? What, what does that mean? And that's quantitative tightening. They lower the interest rates so that you have more free money. If, you're, you're more, if the interest rates are lower, your mortgage payment is now lower. So you have, oh, I have a little extra cash. My, my mortgage payment is lower. Your credit card payments are lower. If the government lowers their interest rates, credit card interest rates are the government's interest rate plus a little. So if the government lowers their interest rates, then credit cards now lower their interest rates. And now all of a sudden, you're not having to pay as high of a bill back for your credit cards or other debt. That's student loans too, right? And you just think through, okay, what are all the places where I'm paying with an interest? Now, all of a sudden, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So if they could lower the interest rates, then more people would have more disposable income and there'd be more money in the economy. So now the reason why they're raising interest rates again is to take some of that money out of the economy. All right, you guys got too much money just floating around. People spending crazy prices. This also helps with inflation. Y'all have all this extra money. People feel like, oh, I don't care that the price of eggs are going up. I don't care that the price of the car is super high. I can pay it. I have all this extra money. Prices of houses. Did you guys notice how high all the houses went? The housing market went skyrocket high, right? That's because people had all this extra money and they could pay these extra prices. But then if you noticed just recently, the housing start numbers were a lot lower. How much, uh, oh goodness, something got in my eye. <laughs> it's 
sorry guys. Um, but how much um, people were starting to buy these new homes. I think it was a new homes number. I think it's hair or something. But the new homes number went down. That's because now all of a sudden people are like, oh wait, the interest rates are going up. I can't afford that high mortgage. The price of this house is high and the mortgage is high, right? But the reason why the government now starts raising interest rates is to take some of that money out of the economy. And their goal is if we, if we have less money in the economy, people can't pay as much for things. So now the prices will start going down because if, if there's lower demand, like, hey, I just can't afford a house at that price. Now there's houses just sitting on the market. And now they say, okay, well, we got too much supply and not enough of you guys want, want it, supply and demand again. So we're going to lower the prices on these a little bit so that more people will be able to afford it. So that's the Fed's way. And it's really not the government, it's the Fed, but y'all know we call everybody the government. So the Fed now says, okay, if we can raise these interest rates, then we can try to get inflation under control because we'll take some of the money out of the market and then the prices will start to come down to meet where the demand is. So that's interest rates rising, right? That's why. That's different though than inflation. But the interest rates rising are trying to stop us from having inflation because they're trying to lower the prices from going up. But the problem is if this is not done correctly and these prices keep getting out of control and these interest rates start going up too fast, then all of that could lead to the recession, which is the five things I told you about before. Okay. So now hopefully you feel a little smarter. <laughs> you know, you know all of those things, right? Thank you, Ko. Ko says makes sense. Yep, good. Thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl put the five there. So GDP, income, employment, manufacturing, and retail sales. Those are the five things we're looking at when we decide if we're in a recession or not. And there's some council somewhere that gets to actually decide like this is the day, but those are the five things they're gonna be looking at. Okay, so in my speech, I'm gonna have to explain what's a recession. Um, I don't know if I'll explain all that stuff. We'll look as I start putting the slides together, but inflation, interest rates, and this is not to be confused with a bear market. So when a recession happens, one of the side effects is that the stock market is gonna start going down. And some people think, okay, well, we're gonna have, we're in a bear market, so we must be in a recession. No, those are different terms as well. A bear market is when the market is 20% off of its highs. So let's look at, I'll show you some stocks that are 20% off their highs. Amazon being one of them. <laughs> um, if you go to investing.com or we could have done trading view, either one, they have pretty decent charts. So let's look at the NASDAQ. Day it went up. It started off down though. I still have something in my eye. Um, in two seconds, I'll share this with you guys. I'm just getting, getting it up. Okay, so this is the NASDAQ. The way I like looking at charts and what I'll be teaching in Miami is how to read a candlestick chart. But right here, if you all look up here in this area, let me put a circle around it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Right here, we'll just do a rectangle. Right here in this area up here, 
that's where the NASDAQ started off 2020. Up here at, this is the first in the year, this candle here. So at the end of the day, on the first of 2022, the NASDAQ was at 15, 843. Can y'all see this? I, I think I'm sharing my screen. Hope y'all can see it. But 15, 843 and 85 cents. Now it's come all the way down, 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 down. It kind of came up a little bit in April and then came down, down, down. Earlier in May, it had come all the way down to 11,203 and 39 cents. Now we're back up at 12, 12,316.90, right? Now let's just see what percent this is of, of where we were before. So if we were looking at a calculator and someone's like, oh, this is too much math, don't worry. You don't really usually need to do this calculation. I'm just sharing what a bear market is. But let's see what percent 12,316 is of where we were. So 12,316.90 divided by where we were before, which is at the first day of the year, it was 15,843.89. Point eight five. So see guys, right now we're 77% of where we were before. So that means we've come down to like say, if we were 100 minus 77, I'm gonna just, we'll round that to 78. So we've come down over 20%. 100 minus 78. We've come down 22% in the NASDAQ since the beginning of the year. A bear market is when the market falls more than 20%. They call that a bear market. If it had just fallen 10%, they would say we're in correction. So that's, that's how they calculate those terms. So in the NASDAQ, which is the tech companies, we're down 20%. So, that, so we would say, okay, the tech companies are in a bear market. That doesn't mean everything's in a bear market though. If we look at the Dow, let's see how far it's come down. So as of today, NASDAQ is down 22% from its beginning of the year. And, and sometimes they calculate it from the all-time highs. I'm just saying this year. So let's look at Amazon. I was looking at something. They were like, it's down 46% <laughs> since the, the beginning of the year or since it's highs. So some of these are really in a bear market. But let's check out the Dow. Okay. Keep having to move this thing out the way. I usually like looking at the S&P 500 too, but we'll just look at the Dow for, for kicks today. So let's look at the chart. We're gonna go to technical chart and then candles. So that's just how I like looking at stuff. And y'all just FYI, the way I'm looking at this, I can't see your questions. So if you have some. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let me put that on here too. So people know the difference between the bear market 
inflation, interest rates, bear market, um, recession, correction. Mm -hmm. You know, in a presentation, it's so difficult because in these presentations, you're not, most of the time, you're not teaching in depth, right? You're just like hitting some high level points and then moving on. But I'm such in a mood right now to just teach. And the cool thing, this is random, but I think the cool thing about where I am now, and I think why God has blessed me at this point is because I'm at a point now where I don't have to please anybody. And that is so freeing. Like, I'm good. I don't care. <laughs> if, if you want to learn from me, learn from me. If you don't, okay. But in this session, like there's some people who are going to come here. This is, y'all are getting the complete vulnerable after, after hours, me just thinking this all through in my head. But like there's some people who have to go to a conference and they have to sell from the stage because at the end of this, they need a certain amount of people to buy whatever they're selling, right? So they they have to go through, you know, well, these are my my top points and then this is this the close and whatnot. And I, I still, I still like I, I run a business and we have staff. I gotta feed the staff. So we still want people to to learn from me. But at the same time, right now, I'm thinking when I go to this conference, if I want to teach, I can teach. And it doesn't have to be worth anything. If nobody signs up at the end of it, okay. But I, I am happy that I'm at the place where I'm at now where I can feel that way, you know? Like that, that's true freedom. When, like, hey, do whatever you want to do. Um, I hope y'all can still hear me. Can y'all hear me? All right, let's calculate the Dow. Here, I'll stop sharing for a second just to make sure I still see you guys. Y'all still there? Yes, that is usually when we do our best. Yep. And then... Um, are we in a bear market across the board, like shares, options, Forex? Um, the overall stock market, what I'm looking at right now is the overall stock market. So the NASDAQ portion, which is mainly technology companies, we just calculated that it's in a bear market. The Dow that I'm about to calculate is just 30 companies, but they are 30 companies that, re that represent the top companies and sectors in our economy. So when we say, when we look at that, it's kind of giving us an overall view at everything. So yes, when we look at that, if it is in a bear market, then we'll say the overall market's in a bear market. I don't think we've reached, reached there yet in the Dow, but let's calculate it and then we'll see. All right. <laughs> Thanks guys. Oh, good. Hey, Adriana, welcome. She said, just stumbled across your live. Glad to have found you. My pleasure. All right, let me share my screen again and we'll look at the Dow. All right, I'm looking at candlesticks just because like I said, that's what we use when I'm trading. So this candle up here, is the first of the year, the screen one in the middle. And it looks like we ended at about, I could be more precise, but for our purposes today, we ended that, that first day of the year at 36,583.63. And then today you'll see it's come all the way down. At one point last month, it was all the way down to 30,652 and 53 cents. You can trade. So someone may wonder, how do I trade the overall index? You can trade this. The best ways to do it are an ETF, 
So like there's ETF that follow the Dow. So DIA is one. You can also trade it using options. So that's the way that you would trade the overall index, but you're not able to actually just buy a share of the Dow because it's an index, which is just like a, it has 30, this for the Dow has 30 stocks in it and it's watching them, but you can't actually trade it. Um, but you can trade an ETF of it or options of it. Okay. So currently though, today it ended at 33,248. 48 and two cents. So let's just see where we are, current, what percent current price is of where we were at the top. And then we'll see how far we've come down. So 33, two, four, eight, 0.02. Let me close this down. Oh, did y'all know I have a TV show on Bloomberg? I feel like a lot of people don't know I have a show. <laughs> <laughs> so um there's a show called the two minute drill and I was a host on it we actually looked at people do their business plans it was a business plan competition and then we awarded the top people every show money to go execute on their business plans it was pretty cool oh it actually was like more like a pitching competition they pitched to us I just thought of that because I closed down that thing and it was Bloomberg. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm on Bloomberg. I have another show coming out called um, Office Hours on Bloomberg. It'll be Bloomberg, Apple TV, and something else. That one, they're having the launch party for it. Is it tonight? They're having the launch party for it in California. I'm still in Puerto Rico, so. Um, but they're having a launch party for it now. So it'll start coming out soon. So yeah, pay attention to, to Bloomberg, I'm, I'm on there. And I'm supposed to be featured in Bloomberg Magazine coming up too, so that'll be fun. Let's calculate this. So, all right, so I'm gonna just do it again. 0.02 divided by 36.583.67. All right, see, so on this one, it's saying that where we are currently in the Dow is 90% is of where it was when it first came into the year. So we're really only 10% down in the Dow, right? So that would be called a correction versus bear market. So for our overall market right now, then we're not yet in a bear market, we're just in a correction. And that's kind of good. That means just like we're not in a recession yet, we're not quite all the way there, which is positive. Now, if we see this as a pump fake, which it could be, like sometimes during on the way down into a recession or on the way down into a bear market, then you'll see like these little pop-ups and then it goes back down. That could very much be possible. But what we know now is that we're not quite there yet. We're more of in a correction, which everybody can breathe a little bit. Like, okay, so I don't have to worry as much we're actually okay. And we are. This also for any of my students that are on the call, if you've been on the sidelines, I need you to come back. Because right now you're missing out on a nice little up move, especially if you're in trade and travel and like you know how to find the buyer's level and, and trade up. You're missing out on some money right here. So go ahead and come back. It's not as bad as we thought it was. This is your signal to get back in. Um, for trade and travel. And then for my, my VIP students, y'all have been in because you've been shorting on the way down. But I want you to also think through, is the momentum changing? So now should you be switching your mindset from shorting like we were doing into riding and going long? So just pay attention because it's not as bad as we think. It's only a correction. Okay. All right, and then you would also do this for the S&P. Would y'all like me to do this one more time for the S&P just so we can see where we are or, or not? Yeah, uh-huh, I have a show on Bloomberg. It's pretty cool. Yep, nice rally, mm-hmm. 
Yes, I'm live right now. <laughs> Someone said, is this live? Yes, I'm live right now. Thank you, Mr. Aviator. Says, congrats, Terry. Never surprised me. In fact, I expect nothing less. Yeah, it's very similar to Shark Tank. It's called Two Minute Drill. And the other one is called Office Hours. I like the Office Hours show better. Like I got a chance to interview uh, Grant Cardone and Damon John. Um, what happens is we have really great leaders come on and then we get to each ask them a question and that's office hours. So it's almost like you're in office hours, like we're in office hours as the host and we get to talk to these people. We talk to um, the guy who's the ice man and jumps into really cold water. We got a chance to talk to him. We talked to Lou Hutt. We talked to um, all these people. I think one of the ones I remember the most, and y'all, I'm so, I suck with names. I feel like I'm about to mess this up, but I, I believe it's Lou Hutt. Is Lou Hutt, Hutt the one who is in government? Y'all tell me if I'm thinking of the right one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep, Office Hour sounds dope. I love that Michelle's like, wow, almost 500 people hanging in here at 11 p.m. <laughs> yep. Can you imagine what it's going to be like to have 500 people in the room together, live, learning at the same time? That's going to be cool. Yes, Marina, my course is 5,000, the full thing. But you can start with half or you can use WiseBank to, and it's wisebank.co slash Terry to do the payment plan, right miles, come back off the sidelines, stuff is moving again, yep, okay, so it's not Lou Hutt then, you said Lou Hutt is an accountant, um, the one I'm thinking about, he's uh, a black guy, he's been in government for a long time, and yeah, I retired my mom last year. Someone just said, have you retired your mom? But he's in government. He's been there for a long time and he actually has cancer now. And it was really cool to talk to him because there was this sense of urgency and wisdom. And I just felt like I just wanted to like sit down at his feet and try to absorb all the wisdom that he had before he was gone, right? And maybe that might be part because like I loved my grandmother and she passed away and it's just like, is there anything else that I could have learned? <laughs> but that was a cool interview on Office Hours, hearing him just talk about the wisdom that we needed to, to know. That was a cool one. And that was on the Office Hours show. So when that one comes out, definitely check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, okay. So no, not, okay. Thank you, Deborah. Not Lou Hutt on Sirius XM. Not him. I can't remember. Oh my gosh. Watch when I, when I get off of here and go look him up and be like, ah, man. But yeah, when Office Hours comes out, definitely check that one out. I enjoyed filming it. So I have a feeling you guys are going to enjoy watching it. No, it's not Colin Powell. Does Colin Powell have cancer? hope not but no it's not Colin Powell but anyway we'll we'll keep it moving but I that one that one really touched me and I was really happy to be in the room I also really enjoyed Damon John too like what's so crazy is lately everybody has been telling me about him like I interviewed two people for uh, Power of One Million and one of them told me like, yeah, Damon wrote the forward for my book. And then another one was like, yeah, I used to be mentored by Damon. And then, and like, this is not even me asking about it. It's just like unsolicited, like, oh yeah. Like his name kept coming up. Then it was uh, Teachable. I'm number one course creator on Teachable and Teachable was doing a conference and they were interviewing Damon John. <laughs> And then something else happened. Oh, then one of my um, mentors was at the Grammys and he's like, oh, I just talked to Damon about you. And then I got a call on my phone and they were like, hey, I'm at lunch with Damon. 
so I was just like, wow, I don't know if anything's going to happen with that. Y'all pray for it. But that seemed, that seemed, that's like, it was really cool to interview him too. Okay. Colin had COVID or yeah. So hopefully not. What? He passed? Oh, okay. No, not that one. I didn't get to interview him. God rest his soul. Oh man, I didn't know that. And then Princess says, when is the Bloomberg show on? To tell you the truth, I do not know. I told y'all, I'm, I focus on my thing and then I go do whatever else. I, I don't know, but look up Two Minute Drill on Amazon. Is it on Amazon? No, Apple TV and Bloomberg. Ah, uh, thanks, Yolanda. Yolanda's talking about, um, I just saw this. Now I'm staying up. I love me some Terry. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, RIP. Okay, so back to this recession talk. So um, I'm going to have to explain what a recession is. And then we got to go into how to invest during a recession. For those that just came in, this is basically just office hours for me. I'm keeping myself accountable. I got to work on my presentation for Black Equity Con next week. And then after that, I have to build out my presentation for my live. I'm teaching my whole course live in two days so the whole eight weeks that's online I'm gonna teach it in two days crash course in Miami so right now I'm working on the speech for Black Equity Con and we decided today that it's going to be how to invest during a recession and make money so how to invest and make money during a recession so I'm just writing the outline now and then depending on how I feel it's already 11 o'clock shoot I um I want to put some slides together. I may have to get back on here tomorrow and just y'all help me stay accountable every day <laughs> until I get this done. Um, okay, so Marina says, what's the... Yeah, we actually do have people in Las Vegas. We have people, trade and travel folks all over the world. And... Oh, thank you. So Kay Hicks did the calculation for us. She said that the S&P is down 15%. So they're also in correction, but not bear market. So thank you, Kay Hicks. I appreciate that. And then the website, I'll put it up in here again. The website to sign up for the live event in Miami. I don't know how to pin stuff. I'm gonna have to pin a comment so y'all can see it. But the live event in Miami is tradeandtravel.com slash live and then if y'all just want to sign up for the course the course is investwithterry.com and that's the trade and travel course that's the one that's the number one course on teachable and and y'all know what's cool like we actually have been the number one course on teachable for the past three years i know there's some people right now that are trying to like get my title i'm not gonna let it happen i'm just not i can't it's not in my spirit to to be number two so i'm just <laughs> so so it just it's just not gonna happen and when when they come for me i'm gonna just have to step up my game like it just it, no <laughs> But honestly, it's because it's because of you guys, honestly. Oh, and here I, I pinned the course. Let me pin the live. There we go. Now you guys have traintravel.com slash live. That's to come learn from me live for in Miami. And the oh, I should have put the promo code is options to take $500 off. So it's basically you get the live experience for $500 and then you still have to be in the VIP program. So whether you're, if you're not in it, you buy the $5,000 course and then come to the live. But if you're in the class already, you just upgrade to VIP and then you get the live for, for $4.99. Yeah. So promo code is options. 
Um, okay, back to this. So the three things to do to invest during recession. So here's the thing. If we start going into recession, we just established that we're not there yet. We're not at recession yet. But if we do start going into recession and, and unemployment starts going up, retail sales start going down, manufacturing starts going down, the market will start going down. I think the best thing that you can do is learn how to make money when the market goes down. And I know y'all hear me say that all the time, but honestly, if we start going into recession, you need to know how to make money when the market falls. And side note, now that I'm thinking about it, you might even want to pin tail retail stocks because they're going to fall really hard during recession. I mean, literally, we just saw Target drop like a rock. Let me show y'all what happened to Target, just in case you didn't know. So let's look back at here and put in Target. Target's ticker symbol is TGT. Anytime you're looking at a company for my newbies, uh, you have to put in their ticker symbol, but look at this. Let me put in a, um, a line. So on the 17th, right before the market closed, this is a green candle. So that means that the market closed higher. The market closed that day at $215.61. Overnight, it dropped way down here to 163 cents. I mean, 163 dollars and 94 cents. That is a huge drop, right? From 215 dollars way down here. Side note, yes. In the live, we cover gaps. This is called a gap. When from one day to the next, price is jumping so fast that there's a gap in the chart. We actually cover in our advanced program, so day two of the live, how to make money on these gaps. So there are students right now who are gonna make some money from this. And actually at the mastermind, we covered Target and we, we started plotting how to make money on this. But this type of thing will start happening in more retail stocks if a recession comes. So just be mindful. If we're in a recession, you're going to need to learn how to make money on the way down. So what is that? When you say how to make money on the way down, here, I'll stop sharing for a second. All right, when we talk about how to make money on the way down, there's a couple ways. And I actually had a call with our VIP students recently, and we went over these, but one is shorting. And that's the stock. If you're shorting stock, that means that you're selling it high and then you're going to buy it back low. That's short selling. We covered that in week five of the VIP program. So that'll be day two of the live event in Miami, short selling. Another thing is going to be selling covered calls. We cover that in the options section. So that'll also be day two. Covered calls are when you own stock, but then you sell options contracts against it to bring in some premium. So it'd be like I own shares of Facebook and every week I'm selling contracts to bring in a little bit of money. So, okay, I still own these shares, but I'm going to offer to sell them and bring in $50 a week just to have, just to sit on my stock. Hey, I'm bringing in, and it could be more than that or less than that. But basically when you're selling covered calls, you're just selling an options contract against the stock you already have. And it's a way to play defense. So it's a way to bring in some income. 
We also cover verticals inside of the course and a vertical just says, it's like a, a goal in football. And here I'll, let me, so y'all can see me. So a vertical is like a goal in football. Just imagine this is the, the um, field goal. When you get a field goal anywhere inside the lines, you still score the field goal. With verticals, let's say I'm selling calls, right? If I'm selling calls, that says anything this way. If the ball goes anywhere inside of here, this line, then I'll get to still make money. And that's what selling a, a call going down would say. As long as the stock price stays below this level, I get to keep all of the premium and that's money that you're bringing in. And then selling puts, let's say that's on this side, selling puts would say, as long as the stock stays above this price, then I get to keep all the money. So anything over here, I still make money. And with puts, if you're selling them, that means, okay, if the stock price stays up here, then I get to bring in this premium. So a vertical, if you have a vertical, could be the call side or the put side. If you do both at the same time, it's called an iron condor. So what I'm just basically saying is if you learn how to do these during a recession, then you'll be able to just bring in consistent money because as the stocks are falling, as long as they stay below your call, you get to bring in premium every week. Or, well, I wouldn't do the put side if they're falling because you don't know if it's going to come through your put. But the point is learning how to do like selling options and learning how to do verticals is going to be really important during recession. So selling cover calls. I think another one is going to be learning when not to trade. That is definitely a position. Having money in cash is a position. The downside though about having money in cash is that during this time, inflation is gonna keep rising. So if your money is sitting in, well, and y'all, I'm thinking through this presentation as we're talking, so I don't have it all figured out just yet. So you're kind of listening to me, me dream and think out loud, but what I was about to say is that having money sitting in cash is not going to be good during a recession because the value of the dollar is going to go down. But then I saw something today that said the value of the dollar was going up. I also think that if the inflation is going up, like our interest rates are going up, then maybe the savings accounts will start making more money. But the last time we were in like a deep depression, which is different than a recession, but a depression the banks didn't have enough money, so they started locking up. So if you have a ton of money sitting in a bank, that won't help you either. So what would be my advice around not trading? Mm. I still think that you would be a trader but I do think that there's going to be some benefit. Like right now, a lot of people have money just sitting on the side. I personally have a lot of money in cash. Like significant amount of my portfolio is in cash and that's a position. So if you're unsure, maybe that's the way I phrase it. If you're unsure of what to do, then it is okay not to make a move and to put it into something else. Now, what else would I suggest? If you're in a recession, I do not suggest putting it into a house because house prices are going to start falling. People are going to start foreclosing on houses. Matter of fact, just like what I think is going to happen with the housing market Housing prices skyrocketed this last couple of years because everybody wanted to get a house. But now with interest rates going up, can you imagine all those people who last year put an offer in on a new build 
It took it a year to be done. And now that you're about to get the new build, you go back to the bank and they tell you, well, that agreement we originally had for that mortgage is now going to be $100, $200, $500 more expensive because the interest rates have gone up. They were at 2%. Now they're at 3.5%. And your mortgage just went from being $700 a month to $1,200 a month. Can you afford it? So I see that there's going to be a lot of houses that are going to be sitting empty. And then potentially we may have another housing problem. Which, if we're in a recession, would make sense. Um, so do I feel like you should go put that money in houses? Personally, I don't feel like you should do that right now. Do I feel like you should put it in your savings account? That makes 0% interest. It's safe, but it makes 0% interest. Also, side, another side note, I'm, I know I'm going on tangents, but another side note, make sure you check your bank and find out what their insurance policy is. Because there's some banks where if you get to a certain amount of money in your account, you're no longer insured for the rest of the amount. And if we're in a recession or we're in some place where banks are having a hard time giving out cash, I want you to know what your rights are around your account. Uh, one thing I will suggest is if you have a large sum of money, put it into a broker account versus a regular banking or savings account. Usually the broker accounts have higher minimums or higher cash thresholds that can be insured. I was talking to um, trade station the other day and asking them about what their insurance is. And they told me they can insure up to 26 million in an account and you could still get all your money back versus I believe I talked to someone else. I don't know if it was Chase or Bank of America, but somebody and at, I don't want to say the wrong number, but I, I was surprised how low it was that they had to actually insure your money. So that was a random tangent, but make sure that you all do go check that out, especially if you're in a recession. Maybe that's something I should talk about. Insurance, get like check insurance on your bank accounts. So I think my advice around cash, like holding cash positions is I think you should link your brokerage account and your crypto account together. I don't know why I feel this way, but I do feel like when we're having a really hard time getting money out of our accounts cash wise, if we do go into a deep recession, crypto is probably going to start blowing up again. I don't have any proof of this, but it's just a feeling that I have so you probably want to make sure that your crypto accounts are open and moving. That might mean, I don't, I don't know if that means buy Bitcoin or buy Ether. I know that there's a lot of crypto people that are, you know, go Ethereum, go Bitcoin, go something else. I don't have an answer for you on that. But I do think USDC, the stable coins, are, are where I'd like to be when I'm just like holding cash in order to invest later. The stable coins have a nice interest rate. So check those out. I know TradeStation does have a crypto and I honestly don't really like pushing them because like we're not partnered with them and we've been sending so many people to them. But um, I know that they have a nice, connection between crypto accounts and cash accounts and it's easy to move money back and forth so you may want to consider that um and they do have usdc coins that have an interest rate the interest rate is is flexible though it goes up and down so when i was at six percent i'm now at um now at 3%, I think it's giving me return. So, but I think that's the only thing that's kind of stable. Side note, everything has a side note in trading. So nothing is foolproof, nothing is guaranteed, but I will say 
with USDC coins, you also need to be careful because when crypto fell a lot the other day, USDC coins went below one to one. So what do I mean? Stable coins are in here. I'll talk. <laughs> like come a little closer. <laughs> Stable coins are a crypto coin that is backed one for one by the US dollar. So for every one stable coin, you can cash it in for $1. And what people like about that is their security. Now, depending on who has a stable coin, that tells you if you're if they really are backed by money in the bank. So there's one company, and I, I told you I'm not a crypto expert, so I'm not going to go deep into which companies are better. But I know there's one company recently that fell apart because their stablecoin was not backed by actual dollars. So they they lost their one for one metric. But then there's other companies where they're for every USD coin, they really have a physical dollar in the bank somewhere. That's the company you would want to go with for US stable coins. Um, I do believe that trade station is using one of the ones that's backed fully by the dollar. Like the dollar is saved somewhere. So just check your broker if you're using stable coins, because that is something that was a scare recently. People took billions of dollars out of stable coins because it was losing its one-to-one -one value. After everybody took money out though, then it went back up to like, for every one stable coin, you get like $1.03 craziness. But um, that's something to pay attention to. The value of your stable coin can change. And I don't like that. I decided to still keep a significant amount with stable coin so that I could get the interest each month. But that's something that you'll have to consider as you're thinking about your portfolio. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's okay to have cash. It's okay to have some in USDC stable coins. Any thoughts that you guys have on ways to invest for a recession? Yeah, so Betty says, I think the FDIC maximum is 2,500,000 like $250,000. I said $2,500,000. $250,000 is the maximum you can have that they will insure you for. So if you have more money than that, then you need to be real careful. Start spreading your money across different banks so that you can get all your money back in insurance. Uh, Jamie says, will this live be available later? I wasn't planning to save it, but I, I can. I can leave it up so that people could see it. Okay, I'm seeing several people say get precious metals. You could. Faith is saying um, maybe tax liens or deeds. Yeah, they'll give you an interest rate. That's true. Okay, so Top Secret says you can talk about buying the dip. I can, but here's the thing, Top Secret. If we're in a recession, I don't want people to be running towards buying the dip. Why? Because in a recession, it can continue falling over a significant amount of time. So the last recession, it actually took in 20, 2007, 2008, it actually took 18 months to officially like, for that recession period. So if you're sitting here buying dips, you might be buying the dip all year and your account is consistently going down. So you just have to be careful about that or make sure that you have a good long-term strategy. I have another video here on YouTube. Y'all just go look it up. But I talked about if your strategy is to be a long-term investor and you start seeing your stocks come down to good prices, then maybe you do make a strategy that every month I'm going to put a little bit more into these stocks and you're going to be averaging down. They call that dollar cost averaging. Every month you set aside, I'm going to put in the same amount and you're hoping that as you get in, the prices of that stock is going down and your average is now going down, right? But if you're a trader, 
every time you put money in, if it goes down, you don't have as much money to trade with anymore. So you can't be buying every dip if you're in a recession because it's just going to keep going lower. So you just have to be careful or decide up front what kind of person are you? Are you a long-term investor or a trader? And it might be that you're both. But in this scenario of trading, if you're going into a recession, I need you to follow the trend down, short sell versus try to catch every, every low and go higher. Because in a recession, it's going to keep going lower. Um, I don't know anything about trading bots, so I can't. I am getting tired, um, so I can't help on that. Hmm. A uh, profit. I can't show them a compound calendar because I don't. I'm not really a long term trader or a long term investor. Usually, people who hold things a long time can use a compound calendar, but I get in and out within a couple weeks, so. I want to stay true to who I am too. Someone says bonds. Uh, Sammy, no, uh, that promo code is only for the live event. But if you go to tradingtravel.com, are there any, pro I mean, if you go to investwithterry.com, and by the course, I'm trying to think if we have any promo codes for the course. Um, oh, try the table. <laughs> any of you guys know my friend Anthony O'Neill? He'll be like, why are you giving out my code, my promo code? Uh, try the table. I made that that promo code for uh, my friend Anthony O'Neill and his audience. I think it still works. So try that one out. I think it gives you 10% off the course. The live event is next weekend, June 11th and 12th from eight to six. Okay, life insurance. That's another thing you can invest in. How long can we expect to start being profit or expect to start being profitable? Bill, a darling, I'm trying to read your question. Being a trader. When, when I first started learning to trade, my mentor said, give yourself a year to start seeing consistent returns. It's, it's fast to learn. I can teach you in eight weeks or however long it takes you to get through the course. But once you're trading, a lot of it is learning how the market moves and learning over time. So I'd give yourself a year to be consistent. But you can be profitable right away. It's just about consistency. Someone asked, do I think the market will go back down? If we're going toward, if we're heading towards recession, yes. If we're not, then no. Personally, though, I'm just I'm just trading the chart. Right now, a lot of stocks have gone into sellers levels. And it's why we saw a couple of days ago, everything was red. And it was like, why is everything red? I think it was Tuesday. Everything was red. Because we were just naturally hitting into sellers levels on the chart. And right now, there's nothing, there's not enough sustainable buyers to just push us up and push through sellers levels without them reacting. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens tomorrow because we, we hit some more sellers and we'll just have to see, we'll just have to see. We'll do what the chart tells us to do. Yeah, it's easy to switch from Forex to stocks if you know how to trade because the charts are gonna be the same. Wealth Builder says, are you going to upgrade your trade and travel program to reflect this current market? Yeah, that's why we're doing the live. So if you want to hear about what's going on now, come meet us in Miami next weekend. And I'm going to be talking about my whole course or teaching my whole course, like literally teaching the curriculum. Um, but I'll have it with a spin of what's happening right now. 
Mm-hmm. And the live the link to the live is pinned. All right, guys. Well, I'm gonna go to sleep now <laughs> so I can wake up tomorrow. I'm glad that we walked through some of this. And then tomorrow I'll go ahead and put the slides together. And I have to just make sure that I don't go over people's heads. Like shorting is tough, but it's something that people need to know about. Like I just think it's important. Um, here, we'll switch this back. Um, hmm. Well, I'll pray and think on it and come back tomorrow and work on the slides some more. Good night, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed hanging out. <laughs> um, if any of this was helpful, please share it with other people. And please um, press the like button. I know that helps more people see our content and subscribe. Hopefully I'll see you in Miami next weekend. Don't forget, you just have to be a VIP student and then the live itself is $4.99. But if you're not in the class at all, when you go to the tradingtravel.com slash live, it'll sign you up for the VIP course and the live. Just use promo code options. Excuse me. <laughs> all right. And thank you. I see some, uh, I think Latisa said, this was great. Thank you, boo. All right. Talk to y'all later. Bye.